Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to cover the basics of one of the most useful features in Adobe Illustrator and that's clipping masks. Let's head on to the computer now and get started. Okay so here we are in Illustrator and as usual guys you can download this exact same template file from the link in the description below and work along from home. In this file we've set up a few different vector graphics here as well as embedding some free stock images that we've downloaded from various free stock websites. We'll link them in the description below as well if you're interested interested in downloading your own and we're just going to jump straight in. The artboard on the left hand side has the examples of the kind of thing we can create with clipping masks in Illustrator. Over on the right hand side we have our working artboard that we are going to show you how these clipping masks work. So starting in the top left hand corner we have a simple square here that we've just created with our rectangle tool and I'm just going to pull over an image here. We've embedded this image but apart from that there is nothing special going on here. This is just a vector square and an image and what I can do is position the image behind the vector. Now this is one key thing to note with clipping masks is the area we want to crop our design or image to always has to sit above the image or the design. So that's why our image is sitting in behind here. It won't work the other way around. I don't have to have a fill color set either. I could flip this to a stroke or I don't even need a stroke color because when we go to create the clipping mask it's going to get rid of these properties anyway. So what I can do now is just just click and drag over both of them, right click and we have the option to make clipping mask. Now the other way to do this is to go to object, clipping mask and make but it's probably easier just to right click and make clipping mask and you can see now we're only seeing the image within the square that we had sitting above. Now the great thing about this is we've not actually deleted the image that's been cropped here so we can still actually move this around. I can double click on our square now and we can either select the square itself or the image in behind and I can move this around and reposition this. I can also double click again on the image to see the whole thing. However, we don't actually see our square now. I can just click the back arrow up at the top left hand corner here and reposition this. I can also change the square itself. I can skew this and it's not going to affect the image or I can rotate or really do anything to it and the image is going to stay in place but it's still going to crop where we have our paths. So I'm just going to scale the image up now to match the change in rotation like so and I can just double click out to get back outside of it. Now the other good thing is I can move this around and the image is going to move with our square so it's being treated as a singular object. I can also scale and the image will scale with the square as well so as soon as you make the clipping mask it's going to be treated as a singular object unless you double click into the clipping group and change the elements within there. Now this doesn't just have to be done with images we can use this with vectors as well. So over on the right hand side this is where I've left all of our images that we're going to use here. You can see we have a bunch of vectorized lines set up here. So these are vectors created in Illustrator and I'm just going to drag them over this X we have over here. Now again these are sitting in behind because I'm wanting to crop the lines as opposed to the X itself. So the exact same process is used here so I'm just going to click and drag over this. Now these lines are grouped but as we'll show you in the next example they don't have to be grouped to create this clipping mask either. It's always going to clip to the top object. So again, right click, make clipping mask, and you can see we have our lines being clipped to the X now. Again, the same thing applies. I can double click into this and we have our full lines there. So we're not actually deleting any of the areas outside of the X, which is really good. It's a completely non-destructive technique, this. I'll double click out. Now the other way to edit contents is I can click on our shape here, go to object, clipping mask and we have a release option so if I click that that's just going to revert it however you will notice that our X shape now has no fill or stroke when you create the clipping mask it is going to get rid of those properties so what I'll do is I'll just select it again and create the clipping mask again what I can also do is go to object clipping mask and edit content so this is the same as double clicking on it and I'm now able to move our lines around within the clipping mask as well and the other thing I can do is because we've lost the the color properties of our X here I can double click and making sure I just select the path of the X and not the lines I can actually assign a color to this again so I've just made this black 
black and we can put a background color in. This is the same with a stroke here. So I can add a stroke to this as well, give it a bit more width and I'll just double click off. Now where this feature can be really useful is if you have a design. So I've got a simple design here. None of this is grouped. You can see each of these elements is on its own. There's nothing grouped here, but a quick and easy way just to crop this without having to delete anything. Say I wanted this to be in a holding shape, like a circle. I'm going to grab my ellipse tool and just roughly in the middle of this design, I'm going to click and hold shift and option to drag out a perfect circle. Again, it's got a fill color applied here, but I'm just going to select all of this, right click and make clipping mask. And you can see it's all going to get cropped to the circle. So it really is just whatever object you have on top. That's what everything in behind is going to get cropped to. Moving on, we have a few different rectangles created here. We can use clipping masks with multiple objects. So I'm going to drag across this picture of these mountains here. We'll scale this up. Now you'll see what will happen if I just click and drag over all of this, right click and make clipping mask. It's only going to go to the top most object. So in that case, that's this rectangle. So I'm going to press command Z. What we need to do is create a compound path out of these rectangles. So that's going to treat them as a single shape. So I'm going to select all of them, go up to object, compound path and make. You can see the shortcut is command eight or that'll be control eight on a PC. Again, I'll right click and now what I'll do is select both of them, right click and make clipping mask. And you can see this is now clipping to all four shapes. Now a good example of this was a recent client project that we just worked on for one of our clients called Glencraft. And I've got the example of the file that we were working on here. So this was for a series of digital displays in a shopping center. So each of these rectangles is a TV screen essentially. And we used clipping masks to display how this image could work across multiple screens here. So again, I can double click into this and you can see we have the image here. I'm able to reposition this easily and instead of having to try and place this image into each rectangle individually. So this is where this technique can be really useful. But going back to our working file, we have another example here where we've got a textured looking circle and I've got a nice shiny gold image here. So this technique can be quite useful to apply textures that are a little bit more photorealistic. We have a few individual splatters that are separate from the circle and this is all grouped together. However, if I go to try and make my clipping mask, you'll see nothing is going to happen. And that's again, because we need to create a compound path out of these shapes. So I'll press command Z and I'll just select our circle again. You can see if I move it around, it is all grouped, but I need to go one step further and go to object, compound path, make. And now if I select both, right click, make clipping mask, it's now going to work. So the last example is using this with text. And now I have two examples here. We have some outlined text and and we have some live text that we can edit and change and it's going to work well with both of these. So I'll just pull my last two images over here. I'll set up the brighter one behind the outlined text. And all we've done is outline this, nothing else. You can see this is grouped together and this is going to work in the exact same way as our last example. So this isn't a compound path. So again, if I select both and try to make a clipping mask, it's not going to work. I'll press undo. I'll select our text and just press command eight, control eight on a PC. Now if I try to create our clipping mask again, that's going to work really well. And like all clipping masks, I can just double click into this and reposition our image if I want to. So this is a really useful feature. Lastly, we have our live text and this is even easier. I don't actually have to do anything to this apart from position my image here. So I'll get this positioned the way I want it. Click and drag over both, right click and make clipping mask. And that's just going to automatically clip to this text. And the great thing about it is this text is still completely editable. So I can just grab my type tool and we can change this to whatever we want. Now the only thing to note is if I try and double click onto this text to edit the image, we can't actually edit the image easily. It's just going to try and get us to change the text instead. So this is where we have to use our edit contents option. So again, going up to object, clipping mask, edit contents, and that's going to automatically select the image and I can reposition this easily now. And I can just double click to get back out. And there we have it. So hopefully you guys have learned something new from this video. If you have any questions at all or any suggestions for new topics that you'd like us to create videos on, do let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, then hit the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe for more weekly content. If you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course, where we cover things like clipping masks in much more detail and in more practical uses, visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time.